can I use a splitter to get two antennas on my helium miner? Keep it simple, keep it real. I'm still back on the topic of helium mining. Um, there's, there's something that I see is coming up a few times on the questions and comments that I've on, on videos that I've done previously. Um, the topic or the question is really using an antenna splitter. So I guess if I just jump into my first slide there, which is the intro to this, and this is a short video, I think. Um, the one thing to keep in mind, a splitter is actually a, um, well, it literally splits the signal. So it's we're not talking about electricity here, we're talking about radio waves. And radio waves, if you really want to, um, the, the easiest way to explain this in, in, in a real world alternative is water flowing. So a splitter splits what comes out of the antenna and splits it into two, which means it's a 3 dB loss to one antenna, it's a 3 dB loss to the other antenna. 3 dB loss is 3 dB lower. That literally would mean if you had a 6 dB antenna, it will perform like a 3 dB antenna. If that's what's okay, then that's fine. But um, that's one thing to definitely keep in mind. The other thing as well, which kind of this is a very vague comment that I have here is some design considerations are required and I'm just going to show you what they are. I can't go into the detail because basically every setup will have to take these design considerations into account. Right, but before I get into it, remember or please stay connected to RF Shop so we can discuss and listen to questions that you may have. Um, as I mentioned last week and I will always mention this, our primary focus is on 4G, 5G and Wi-Fi. That's where all the awesome stuff happens. Um, I mean, there's so much going on and it's summer in Australia, so caravan community is back up again. We have a lot of interest in getting better internet in the rural areas. In the post-COVID era, era, people are living, um, or, yeah, well, living more rural and working from home. So the demand to have proper internet in rural places is more and more, and it's awesome to be part of that. So. Um, in this YouTube channel we're definitely going to play, sometimes serious, sometimes not so serious. But for now on the Helium topic it's also a, a community that's growing and we definitely just want to spend some time on the antennas for that community and try to explain some of the principles like I'm going to do in the next few slides. So the first one, I, mean, I just took this down from um, well, for Wiki, Wikimedia. Um, the thing that you're going to have to consider here is it was physics in high school it's um, I learned it physics again in um, university and now it is actually going to be something to be very mindful of and that's where you have different signals or different waves different sine waves coming together and they will actually potentially cause trouble they could potentially cancel out they could potentially um, well actually some as well to be stronger which is probably not a bad thing but as luck would have it you'd be one or the other and it could be wrong so if you don't look at your phase lengths you are likely to have a problem now wavelength at 900 meg is about 30 centimeters so it means you have 30 centimeters to play with and that if you are out by 15 centimeters you have a problem and it, what's the likelihood over the whole setup between two antennas and the cable lengths that you're not going to have it perfect? The easy way, of course, is to just use the same cable length. That's an easy one. So if you always use exactly the same cable length between two antennas into a splitter, that's easy. We can control that. But where you put the antenna is the other one. So let's look at the next picture that I have. This is how it can be, and then you have a problem. If you look at there's a wave coming in. So basically, from the right-hand side, there is my signal coming in from another helium miner that I'm trying to pick up with two omni antennas on the roof. So I have two antennas, both can see the same source far away. You can see if I just look at the timing there, when one is at a low, the other one is at a high. The spacing is just, it happens to be such that high, low, high, low. And then what gets fed down is null, it's nothing. That's the problem. So how you would fix that is you would basically move antenna number well, two, basically in this case. You need to move physically. You use the same cable, but you just have to reposition it so that this one picks up the same signal in the same phase as the other one. The problem is going to be here. This is now going to work perfectly for one miner. So you have these two antennas lined up and that guy that's over there that you're picking up, ah, that's all going well. But you have miners all over you, all around you. Each of them has a different ratio of length between one antenna and the other one. And 
you're going to keep having this problem again back and forth back and forth so no basically that just shows you two omni antennas and a, and a splitter it's not going to work it's going to, you're going to cause a lot of trouble now i i feel in my first video i actually was quite blunt a few times i said it ain't going to happen um and i did see some let's call it resistance in that in saying that saying i'm a, I'm a for lack of a better word i'm a bullshitter just listen to me on this one when it comes to rf there's a lot of stuff that needs to be taken into account so it's better to not do this than to try and do something and it doesn't work it may work for you but that's because you test it in a certain way and it might just be you might be lucky or it might be good but now that you look at this so one minor i got it fixed my distance is not correct but now there's a minor from there i never knew about this guy i'm not getting this guy just don't do this what you can do though well as an idea is basically have two directional antennas facing each other the thing there would be the two directional antennas will not get anything from what the other antenna can get and so this is where it's an option i think it's actually an opportunity potentially so you have two antennas facing back to back so i'm not seeing what this guy is seeing so nothing that that he sees could interfere with what i'm pushing in so you have these two antennas facing away from each other i'm thinking about a high-rise building or something that you you say well i i, I just don't have the opportunity to get an omni antenna on the roof you need to remember there's losses so say you say i can only go for 6 db antenna go for a 9 db directional antenna two of those back to back there's 3 db loss but then you're effectively going to have a 6 db system facing two two sides each of them gets their own um, connections to wherever you are around you so I don't have to have anything so i'm on this i'm facing north the other one is facing south I don't know about each other never get the same thing but we go to the same minor and we all get a nice big solid um connection to various miners in my um in my area that's my suggestion that 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 will look awesome um still need to make sure that it's all good and well you need to make sure you have a good um splitter everything still needs to be quality but when it comes to directional antennas there are actually quite a few 4g supporting antennas that you could consider i would i'm specifically thinking about one that we would sell don't need to be focused that it has to be 915 megahertz antenna look for 4g antennas look for directional 4g antennas there's a lot of good antennas out there cost effective um don't have to be over the top expensive in this case that's really all i have to say about that today um, thanks for watching and see you on the next video and happy mining. I'm going to go back to 4G. Cheers, bye-bye.